the CCC presents a Shiner production in association with Nintendo, Konami, and those no-namers. It began in 1981 if you wanted to be called an outcast. It actually began in 1985, and it's too bad we didn't wait another year longer so it would be a nice even 20. And then there were volcanoes, thousands of them. Then came Gradius 2 which has the exact same announcer as this game and was never released in North America for no good reason. After that was the benchmark classic, Gradius 3. Many years later was the import-only benchwarmer, Gradius Guided. And then there's Gradius 4. Uh, don't ask me about it. Now, three years after the release of the original game, the movie is finally here, with a licensed game soon to come. Gradius! Dances! Move it! Party time! Excellent! Woo! Whoa, talk about distortion. Well, or the Nord Death No Death Run, you could call it that too. Uh, let's get started. Game Boy Player settings check. Gradius Galaxy Zone settings check. Maybe, no way, nah. Oh yeah. Now Vic Viper's configured appropriately. Let's go! Uh. I couldn't decide what to say at the start. Maybe, oh yeah, like Bender from Futurama, which is surprisingly hard to recreate, actually. Or, oh yeah, it's a stone cold shit. Like the robot peace officer from the same show. Or maybe just cry out, <laughs> alright, like Quagmire from Family Guy. I'm just full of indecision. Double. Double! <laughs> That's right, I got a double first! Oh. Missile. Cocoons aren't missiles aren't working here. Come on, missiles. Oh. Now regular fire isn't working. Oh no, they're both back. Actually, if you were paying any attention at all at the start, you would know that shot and missile are on separate buttons. Uh, this is stage one. And because I can't freeze my options, it's the third hardest stage in the game. We'll see why in a bit. If, okay. I made you guys wait long enough. If you just want to see me do something amazing, which I kind of already did in the trailer, only easier, just go to time marker 3330. I'll say it again, 3330. Oh, there's the bonus. <laughs> Some of you may have wondered about all, you know, my style of shooting in time with the music and all the option dancing. Well, basically what I did in this video is shoot with the normal guns for the melody most of the time, and usually when the notes are high and fast. If the melody is low and a little slower, uh, I'll just fire missiles because they make a low sound. Oh man, I forgot to mention. You guys should have noticed that my score was 118.00 because 118 is the best number ever. Uh, then there's this part. I died so many times in this part. I mean, like, 70% of all my failed runs were in stage 1. It's the third hardest stage in the game, like I said. Um. Anyway, about my dancing theory, if I'm not shooting at all, and just dancing in time with the music, I move up when the pitch goes up, down when the pitch goes down, and left and right when the pitch doesn't change. Left and right just signifies rhythms. Okay, I break the rules every now and then. That's right, you just heard the sound of paper being turned over. I'm actually reading what I'm saying from a script. And since this part is written in pencil, I'm wondering if I'm supposed to use a different voice. Uh, I kind of rearranged this. I'm a bit lost. <laughs> Man, I'm such a show-off, hiding in the rocks there. I actually go through the second boulder in the second worst way possible. The only worst way to get through it is to follow from the top, but the best way is to stay in the middle. Now, for this part, I was supposed to switch to frame 17, and then try to cover up for the fact that it's really fruity by saying it looks like the curtains above the bosses in Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Um, you know, Game Boy Player background. See all those stars and planets on the side? Oh, forget it. Now, I have to say about this boss, worst scoring system ever. Like, it's even worse than Life Force. Your score just kind of goes up randomly. Oh, this run is bad. I'm gonna end it. Never mind, that didn't work. Anyway, I was saying, my highest in stage 1 is 49,900, and I just came 1,000 points short of it, which is pretty good. Taibo's best is only 41,900, so now he knows how to match my score. Um, I think if I could freeze my options in that part, it would be a lot easier. <laughs> Look at this frame. Missile! Missile! 
It's the only animated frame. It's so cool. Like, and if I was if I was back at number 17, then it would be a lot harder to switch to number 19. I actually died twice because I was changing the background and my ship wasn't moving. Now here we are uh, in the glass stage, not the ice stage. It's the glass stage. Um, this isn't the ice stage. You know, according to the manual, it is the glass stage. It's official. I think a glass stage is a very cool concept. <laughs> oh. Um, but does raise quite the question: Why are the bacteria making so much glass? Why the cocoons do they need it? Is it like 390 billion times stronger than metal? Or do they just have an artistic hunger for stained glass? Either way, I think it is neat seeing all this glass, you know, giant pieces of glass on top of possibly glass crystals, which doesn't make any sense at all. Because glass isn't a mineral. Glass, 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 glass. Oh. What is this, you stupid options? Oh! Ah! Tap squad, I missed something I usually hit! Ugh. That's it, I have to make an Omaki version just so I can show that I can normally hit that. Out of hundreds and hundreds of runs, I normally hit everything in this stage. Why is it that in this, all the successful no-death runs, something horrible has to go wrong, like missing a piece of glass? Ugh. Anyway, I'm kind of wondering why they didn't use ice. You know, ice seems to have just as much, if not more, artistic flavor than glass. I mean, the only game where glass had any importance or meaning at all was my favorite RPG, Final Fantasy Legend, and its sequel, Final Fantasy Legend 2. You guys are adding 1,300 points to my score, right? 1,000 from stage 1 and 300 from the piece of glass? Good. Um... I tried not to do all the crazy, risky stuff in that maze part, because I like to think that my videos are meant to be a guide as much as they are super plays. Um... Anyway... People who live in glass houses shooting fire missiles! Ah! <laughs> so yeah, just one last reminder, this is the glass stage, not the ice stage. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It is Castlevania the movie. I mean, glass stage. Uh, I think about 30% of the failed runs. Wait a minute, 70 plus 30. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, a lot. A lot of the failed runs were the result of screwing up on the generators back there where I still had my tail gun. And for those who were watching carefully a while back, note how my twin laser hit the guy on the roof. And a normal laser wouldn't- oh hang on, it's time for homemade formation options. It's a good thing. Look at me firing in time with the music and stuff. Taste homemade formation options, you- Oh wow, that guy's aim sucked. Watch how powerful this is. Normally you can milk this boss for 6,600 points, but I just wanted to save time because milking this boss is glory. Look how fast that was. Another reason why twin rhymes with quid. That's right, I have a really controversial pronunciation of quidditch. <laughs> Actually, you shouldn't be worried about how to pronounce a word like quid anyway, because if you are worried about it, consider the possibility that you fail at life. The same thing applies to saying LOL SHINER out loud. Hint, hint. Oh, now I have to figure out where I am. I'm totally in the wrong spot. Um... Oh, I was supposed to run into one of those guys in my force field, but it was a little trigger happy there. Yeah, here's a cool stage with cool music. Stage 3, the artificial galaxy. The second power-up you get is a Mega Crush, Mega Crash, whatever. Just cool music, because it reminds me of this cool game for NES called Faxanadu. It's really comparable with that game's music. And I know it's not comparable with Golden Sun The Lost Age. Like, come on, you guys! It's Gradius! The music has always been, you know, jazzy little beeps and loops. And, you know, it's not meant to have the same sound quality as Golden Sun. Don't worry about it. I personally love all the music in this game, except for one or two tracks, and I'll tell you what they are, too. <laughs> Um... Hmm. 
Notice how the spread bombs deal a ton of damage to these lions and not my tail gun. And also note how I said spread bombs and not wussy missiles of type A. Another great reason why type B is the best. Okay. I think I fixed the microphone here. If you couldn't hear me all this time, it should be better. Um, thanks to Tybo for helping me find those 5,000 bonuses. Okay, I already knew about the one in stage 1, but I didn't know about the one in stage 3. I later found out that he got all his information from the Gradius homeworld, but I'm not disappointed. He did reveal all the answers to me in time, over an excruciating week, just like a Zen Master would. Just so you guys know, Tybo is supposed to do a Gradius 3 no-death run and hopefully on arcade difficulty. Oh, what the heck, I missed a fireball. Okay guys, add 1,500 points to my score now. Okay, just 1,300. Okay, just 1,000. This area I like to call Fireball Alley. At first I had no idea how to survive it, and now it's easy for me. Although one day I just couldn't pass it at all. I like to pretend that Wiz plays this game. You know, the same guy who did the Appreciate DVD, Kariku Ruga, and Shikigami no Shiro too. Yeah. I think he knows the, all the sweet paths to get through stage 3 and stage 5. Sort of like a motivating factor to me. Now this section is dedicated to the greatest Canadian hero of all time, Wax12. So th therefore it's the greatest section in the whole movie. And it doesn't feature a flaming dragon. <laughs> That's right, it features a flaming lion, chimera, whatever. I don't think it's possible to put that explosion right on top of the Viper. Ooh, I want options to do that. Neat. <laughs> um, I'd like to take a moment to mourn for all those missing points that I've had so far. <laughs> Sorry, let me try that again. That was better. Oops, I broke my promise. I smashed into that guy with my force field. I wasn't supposed to do that again, okay? Alright, I'll never do it again. Now here comes 4-2. You have to be careful in this part, because you can't kill the generators too early, but you also have to get all the rocks. Yeah, sorry that this stage actually comes first. Uh, I actually recorded them. I recorded stage 5 before stage 4 in the trailer on the tape, and I just didn't want to rearrange it. Now look at that volcano. It's not just a volcano, it's a falling volcano. I actually died in stage 4 more than I did in stage 5 or stage 6. Or stage 7! Speaking of those stages, stage 6 often proved to be harder than I thought, and I ended up putting stage 5 before... Oh no, wait. I gotta stop reading a script verbatim. <sighs> well, good thing, because I'm out of verbatim notes. On to just jot notes and stuff. Unless I want to mention old stuff that's in the script. Let me see. Put a note on the floor here. Um, oh, what have I been over? Okay, now I'm just stuck watching my own video. <laughs> I seem to be mesmerized by my own skill. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I think sadly it's just kind of true. Holy! You think that's bad on this loop? You should, try, you should see it on loop two. Oh, there! I just broke two hundred thousand. If you guys want to beat my score, you got to break 200,000 by this marker. Perhaps earlier. Especially if you actually melt the stage 2 boss. And don't forget that I dropped 6,600 points on purpose, okay? And with the messed up score in stage 1, I should be 7,600 points behind, alright? Good. <sighs> yeah, you guys are probably whining. Oh, Shriner's such a point whore, why doesn't you milk all the generators? But I am. You see, there are two different kinds of generators in this game. The green ones, the green kind of square box shaped ones, those are trashy horror generators. They put out once and you're done with them. Now coming up are some more egg shaped generators, which... Uh, excuse me. Um, these spit out guys twice. And the higher the loop is, the sooner the second, uh, second wave comes. Now, I wish I had figured out a better strategy for this part, but... I just didn't have time, and it wouldn't be that many more points. No, I didn't do very good here. Definitely not very good there. But I actually died there a lot of times. Look how many bullets were in that corner there. 
<sighs> Ever play a part in the game and have the exact same thought? Like when you played it last time? Like for example in the double laser 3-1 to be Karuga. Oh, jeez, look at that. Demonstrating the eternal usefulness of a force field. <laughs> Losing it right away. Well, almost. Anyway, in the double laser in 3-1 to be Karuga, when I'm sitting in there, I think of a quote I read. You know, George Bush once said, we know you work hard to put food on your family. For some reason, I always remember that when I play that part. And at the part where my score says 118.00, I think of myself like saying in the most pro wrestler sounding voice possible, uh, We all know that you're not afraid to real me. Oh wait, that's not how it goes. It says, we know you all missed the real me. The one who's not afraid to kick ass at Ikaruga. Yeah, that's the line. This is annoying when I have trouble remembering my own thoughts. Oh, see? Look, no bonus there. Absolutely none. It's not in Gradius Galaxies. It's in the Japanese version, Gradius Generation. Now look at this terrible, terrible option placement. Um, just so you guys know, I'm lined up on where Laser would be on the power-up bar and on the dark part in the background, but anyway, I'm supposed to go left and then down, but I went down first, so it's gonna take about 10 seconds too long. I terribly, terribly apologize because now your video is gonna be too much, you know, it's gonna be too big for file size. <laughs> if you go against the very back of the screen, there's nothing that guy can do. Now, I actually didn't know that you could milk this boss until Taimo told me. And it only gives you about a 20,000 point bonus because I'm using Type D, which is probably the worst possible ship you can use for this part. Because the spread bombs are a little bit slow to catch all the bubbles, and the twin laser kills the core too fast. See, look, it's almost dead. Usually I, I'm lucky to get more than two, you know, runs of bubbles. Um, type A is the best because the cyclone laser, and you can just sweep all the bubbles at once. Type B was probably second best because Ripple just has huge coverage there. Uh, type C was second best because thrust isn't very, you know, it just pierces. <laughs> uh, look at all this messed up stuff I do in this video for fun. I would never try any of this on higher loops because there would just be too many suicide bullets and stuff. Okay, I messed up this trick. I'm supposed to kill all these guys with one volley of missiles. But not quite. And those guys too. I probably practiced this stage more than any other stage in this game. And I'd also estimate that I played Gradius Galaxies for at least 100 hours over the course of many vacations and a full year. But I'm just glad I managed to get this out right at the pinnacle of all the Gradius 5 hype. <laughs> Gradius 5 is a great game. I'm only using Type 1. Type 1 all the way, baby. I am wondering if I can beat T-Vix. Probably not, but I think I can beat Alamore. If I, you know, really practice hardcore. Because I can do pretty good at 7-1. I can take out all the big cores except for one. Provided I have a second force field. Oh, I'm not doing very good here. I'm falling behind. Missing the wide heads and stuff. You know, I always felt that, you know, in the Gradius backstory and all the science of it, the Moai heads are always a neutral faction and the Bacterians just hired them. Probably by paying them in rocks. Or Canadian dollars, same thing. Yeah, speaking of the science of Gradius, I have a big, stupid theory about how it all works. Um, I think that the Vic Viper is mostly based on thermal power. Oh, what the heck, I missed it. Missed the entire head. Uh, anyway, I think the Vic Viper is based on thermal power, and if you look at power-ups, you see this you know, red liquid is kind of sloshing around in it. So I think that the power-ups are just filled with a liquid coolant. And, you know, the speed-up just fires the engines to make them go faster. Missiles are launched with a blast of heat, although I couldn't explain I wish I could explain that better, but I haven't taken all my physics classes yet. Double... Oh my goodness. My description for this doesn't make any sense, but I just wrote down Double temporarily overclocks computer to redirect, redirect fire. That has nothing to do with heat. It has to do with voltage. It's electricity. Which just has sometimes as heat as a byproduct. Oh. I think I did terrible in this tunnel. I missed, you know, a lot of heads survived. And... Although I did get a lot of rings, 
Um, you'll see that once I get through this next tunnel, I'm supposed to have about 403,000 points, but I totally came short of that. Uh, oh well. Anyway, um, about the power-up system scientifically working. Uh, lasers are just, they take a lot of heat to maintain. Option. Okay, I don't know how the option works, but doesn't it look like a giant flaming ball? I don't know. Someone else explained it for me. And the force field. Well, that look, doesn't that look hot, too? You know, it could be a distortion field. It's, you know, atoms are moving around really fast in it and generating heat. Oh, gee, I'm missing 8,000 points. Well, that's beyond my control, so forget it. But let's assume I did play perfectly, so I'm missing... Uh, 1,700 points, plus 6,600, plus 8,000, that's 14,600, plus the... Okay, 16,300 more is what I need. I'm just gonna leave this alone and put the programmable controller in, which does dodge all that fluff that doesn't do anything for you for some reason. Okay. For those of you who think you can play Gradius Galaxies with a programmable controller, you are really gullible. Because bullets, like suicide bullets, are generated somewhat randomly. Although I have figured out that this game uses the same kind of random number generation as Dragon Warrior 3, where you could save your state, you know, view parts of a battle, and then when you reload the state, things will go exactly the same as you just saw them. You know, things are written in stone at once they're decided. I figured this out because in 1-1, because I shoot in time with the music to get rid of my enemies, the suicide bullets will always go the same way, so the random values are based on the clock. Still, actually, that means you could play this game with a programmable controller, however, figuring out the right pattern would be incredibly impossible. Unless, you program it to copy what you just played. Ugh, trying to get these legs on the bottom is so hard. You have to get so close to the ground. Notice how I lowered myself one pixel and managed to hit it that time. Oops, I missed two games, so there goes 200 points. Hmm. <laughs> Power ups are liquid cool it. I guess that in Gradius 1 and in Gradius 5, the Vic Viper had a sweet air conditioning system, so that's why power ups give you points. Every time you got a power up, the spare could be used to power the air conditioning system. So I guess in, you know, in Gradius 1, power ups give you 500 points, but in Gradius 5, they give you 800. I guess the air conditioning system is even sweeter. Oh, I didn't want to kill him. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Snacky caused that. Look at the missiles here. Look at the explosions. One of them just teleports randomly. That's a weird glitch, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, about that time has expired. It's been exactly two minutes. That's a handy feature of the Game Boy Player, is you can set a timer. Um, you know, if you're cooking something, you have to come back to it, you just set the timer. Or if you have to, if you want to go to bed at a certain time, just set the timer. Now, if only I had a good Game Boy game that I could actually use the timer feature for. Shiner fully endorses the Game Boy Player. And in addition to product placement, I'd like to bring up uh, the Hori controller, the Hori Digital Pad for GameCube. It looks like a Super NES controller, but it's for your GameCube. It's so awesome. Um, speaking of which, I also endorse Licksang.com, um, because that's where I bought my Hori controller for something like 1688 US. And then with shipping and stuff, it came out to about 25 Canadian, which is still a decent deal, I guess. Um, I used it, I didn't like it at first, Rikuruga, but once I lent out my copy and hadn't played it in about two months, I just decided to start using the Hori controller. Although it does make my thumb sore, it is physically better for playing shooter games because it's a lot easier to make small movements because the pad is huge. Whoa, that was risky. I don't care if it took about four weeks for that controller to arrive, Lixang included an awesome sticker, which I haven't stuck on anything yet. So, there. And let's add one more thing to the endorsement list. Uh, VicViper.com. It's loaded with lots of cool screenshots of this game. I don't know who runs it. I know that uh, Rorschachma runs the Gradius base. Uh, TVix runs Gradius Whole World. I don't know who runs VicViper.com, though. All I know is that he must be good at this game, because... 
Actually, both Force the Gradius Homeworld and at Viper.com. The screenshots for this game, they're both using Type D, and they're playing at max speed. They both have max speed by the time they're done Stage 2, which is sick. It's just sick. Why would you want max speed? I mean, max speed is impossible to control in this game. There's nothing to gain from it. I mean, you spend a lot more time fitting in between bullets than running away from them. This isn't like one of those American-style shooters where you can't fit in between anything because the plane takes up one-eighth of the screen. I mean, this, the hitbox in this game is pretty small. It's on the front, you folks. Yeah. By the way, guys, it's on the front. If you look carefully in Stage 1, you see I used that knowledge to my advantage. Because I know that basically the entire back half of the ship is, you know, just there for looks. It's not vulnerable at all. I think about maybe a total of five or six pixels on the front are safe. Although that's being generous. And you know, Life Force always confuses me because in that game the hitbox is on the back. Which is not very good. Because when you're at the back of the screen... Wait a minute. I don't know what I'm talking about. All I know is that in Gradius 5 it's the best ever because it's like the size of four pixels. Actually, no, that's the size of it in cave games. That's just going to an extreme. I considered doing a, a music dubbing for Stage 6, just throwing in some Life Force music, because Stage 6's music isn't that entertaining for some people, but I like it. Shoot it in the eye! <laughs> Shoot it in the nuts! Yeah. Good old Vic Viper always going for the naughty bits. Always taking the easy way out of a fight. <laughs> I was excited when I first came to Stage 7. I was on a band trip at the time I played this game. Force field. Stage 7 was a lot of fun. <laughs> I noticed that Starman sent me a... He sent me a voice sample of the announcer in Gradius 2, and it's the exact same announcer that's in this game. Okay, forget my music dancing theory there. <laughs> anyway. You know, about those Gradius announcers, they're all so unique. Like, for example, in this game, he just sounds like a 20 year old. You know, yeah, this sounds like a youthful 20 year old with lots of energy. In Gradius 3, Super NES, he sounded like a 60 year old general. You know, listen to the way he says speed up. He's all like, speed up! It sounds so old. In Gradius 4, he sounds like the ghost of a 40 year old dude died in a car crash is trying not to cough. At least, well, when I heard videos, he sounded like that anyway. So, up. <laughs> Sounds all ghostly, doesn't it? Um, Salamander, for Arcade, he sounded like this 80-year-old who was almost dead. Look it up for Force Field! Uh, then in Gradius 1 for NES, the announcer just sounded like he was dead. Oh, what a horrible time to get a Mega Crash. Mega Crush. Whatever! Stupid anguish confusing these things. I'm supposed to have a laser by now, but we'll see how this goes. The thing about these porcupine guys is if you use this game's continue feature to just go from stage 7 on loop 1, they won't shoot at you. But as you can see, if you just go from stage 1 and let the ranking go up, then they shoot at you, alright? I'm looking at my missiles right now because I'm about to miss a generator. Laser. That made me very sad. But it looks like I'm gonna have just enough power-ups for the end. <laughs> no, I'm trying, I'm fighting to keep something off the screen. It's not on screen yet. Oh no, it's made it onto the screen. Dang it. Some of you may have picked up right away that this doesn't look as intense or as difficult as it was in the trailer. That's because in the trailer I just continued from loop 2, so there'll be more suicide bullets and they'll move faster too. This part was so fun when I first came to it on the band trip because I wasn't totally aware of where the hitbox was and I didn't know how easily you could fit in between things. I tried to show you guys how screwed up the graphics layering in this game is, but I didn't do it right. I'll make an Omaki to show you what's going on here. Because the way the graphics layering goes, um, 
is it goes stage 7 boss, power up meter and score, the Vic Viper, the options, um, your, your fire, enemy bullets, and then, no wait, walls go somewhere in there, I don't know. <laughs> you know, the farthest I made it one time, you know, after I decided to make this video, I wasn't recording, I was just practicing, and I made it this far. And I'm like, oh, I'm set, I'm just gonna show off and smash into a guy with my force field. But my force field ran out before I ran into him, so uh, I died. Good thing I wasn't recording, because then I would feel a lot more depressed. Oh yeah, looks like I switched to three speed ups. I wonder why. Three speed ups is the perfect speed for. No wait. Two speed ups in this game, I think, is the perfect speed for any craft in any shooter game. Because it's slow enough to fit in between stuff and fast enough to run away from just about anything. I think the Ikaruga is just a tad too slow, and Saibari R2 is a tad slower than the Ikaruga, and Shikigami no Shiro should just be shot around such slow characters and slow everything, and really stupid bullet patterns too. So here we are, coming into stage 8, the Death Star. Hey, is that a free bonus? Excellent. Got him. Oh, I missed one! I missed that gun. I can't believe it. And for some reason, I intentionally ran out my force field here. Never mind, I just risked my life for 100 points. I think there's a certain psychological comfort that comes from having a force field. Because you just kind of feel immune to everything while you have it. Or while it's equipped. <laughs> I was supposed to switch to background number 13 when I came into here. Oops. Uh, maybe I should mention that I was probably playing so good because my dad was watching me play ever since stage 2 began. Stage 2-1. And here's the final boss, etc. That was really short. Wait a minute, the final boss has a core? That's not right. Yeah, I know, everybody's like, but the final boss in Gradius is always so easy. Well, think about it. If you were fighting a war, you would not put your foremost technology and weapons on your leader. Because your leader is supposed to be behind all the front lines. If your leader gets killed, then you'll know that every single defense that you had was thrown at the attacker. Right? You know, if you're losing on the front lines, but your leader is well defended, is your war philosophy any good? So the Bacterians are really fighting a practical war, I think. <laughs> Music glitch. This <laughs> this core! What? Okay, it's possible to milk that part for 52,000 points, but I decided not to because it takes two more minutes and it's really boring. And there's all the other backgrounds. And one of my favorites, number 20. No, I can't really press my thumb that fast on the control pad. I'm using my index finger. I'm not a monster. Here it is! 3330! really fun part. The same thing as what I did in the trailer, only with three speed-ups. This is section 8-6, and I think it's harder than bullet-eating Taggery, harder than Savari R2's Area 5 boss. This is just about the hardest thing you can do in a shooter. I practiced it on loop 2 and on loop 1, and I didn't practice it with three speed-ups that much. Although, I, the only time I got here, I didn't make it. Well, excluding this run, of course. I actually died like in five seconds of the three speed ups run. <laughs> you know, I used my force field overly early there. I think I could have survived. Now, I'm not quite sure if Oksu was right about his shooter philosophy is that move as little as you can while I kind of move all over the screen. I think I have this sort of superstition about Gradius Galaxies wherein. If I fit through a really small space, then less bullets will come for me. See, look, I fit through that small space and all the bullets went to the middle. So then I would know that I shouldn't go in the middle. You don't want the bullets to be spread out all over the screen here. You want them to kind of clump together, because then they're easier to avoid. Huh. You know, one time in the ice field, stage 7, I went to the bottom left corner for some reason, and then two ice blocks started heading for me. And I thought, oh no, this run is all over. 
I'm dead. And I had my force field. And <laughs> I'm trying to end it early right here because I'm so nervous. And usually I don't do that. In fact, I don't even know how to end it early, so I kind of failed. Now, for some reason, the wheel at the top there disappeared. It doesn't do that with three speed up, two speed ups anyway. Alright, I'm beat. I beat the high score too. I wonder if we're dropping frames. I think the music is out of sync. Anyway, back to my story about the ice field. I was trapped in the bottom left corner and two rocks were heading in basically in my vicinity. And I just kind of thought, oh, this is all over. And some other part of my brain took over and I made itty bitty microscopic movements and I lived. Sadly, that run didn't make it any farther. Much farther. I think I died in 8-6 in that run. Okay, I could have got about 200 points more from that generator. I haven't practiced milking that one too much. <laughs> this music is awesome. This is one of my favorite tracks in the game, and I think I should remix it. Oh yeah, I gotta watch my power-ups here. Because there aren't very many here. I think the temperature here is going up. I should get a power up and activate the air conditioner. Dang it, I'm out of things to say, I think. Used up the jot notes and. Let's look in the margins for my script. Um. Oh, yeah! <laughs> If you guys look carefully at uh, section 3-3, when I first came in and there were tons of power-ups on screen, I got a laser and then a double right away. That's a goofy little power-up control trick that I have, so that I'll be more likely to land on a force field. I don't know exactly how it works, but it just does. You know, it kind of advances the power-up meter 7 instead of 6 or something. Okay, no mega crash crush 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 crash crush over here. <laughs> so here's that part where I shamefully died in the trailer. So, you know, everyone's like, oh, did he do that on purpose? Well, actually, no, I didn't. <laughs> I just thought it'd be a funny way to end the trailer. For some reason, these generators remind me of Cash Cabal. Maybe because those generators are awesome for being on the wall and Cash Cabal is awesome. Laser. Just like Cash Cabal. You know, ever since like 8-6 ended, 8-7 is about 20 seconds long and then 8-8 is still going on right here. Anyway, this section is uh, the Tunnel of the Flying Furnaces. Oh yeah, I think we have dropped some frames. Anyway, I died while getting that bonus on one of my runs and it was pretty depressing because I thought I was well prepared. And we just entered 8-9. And now you get to see the best option rape ever made. Sorry, option surprise sex. <laughs> I think that the rank kind of maxes out after a certain point. Because after 3-1, you don't see suicide bullets that much more frequently. If you just continue from 3-1 on loop 1, you won't see that many suicide bullets. But if you play there from the very beginning, you'll see a lot more. <laughs> this music is cool too. Dancing here is a lot better with uh, three speed ups because it's so fast. <laughs> this reminds me. Sometimes, like, you know, if you're on a bus and you can hear the engine revving really high and it's just whining, like, Boop! just kind of try to sing the sound that it's making and see if you can harmonize. It'll sound really weird. And if you can, try to get other people on the bus to do it too. <laughs> it wasn't my idea, though. Really, someone else thought of it. Jeez, uh, oh I am out of notes. We're kind of winding down here. This is section 8-10. Why are there so many sections? Now, the reason I kill those guys so quickly is that if you don't, they kind of run off the screen like a bunch of spooked deer. They shoot once and then exit off the left side of the screen. And I was kind of tempted to just break one of them with my force field, but uh, again, I was pretty nervous. Now coming in here is a spider walker with 360 legs. No way. It's actually the giant WTF wheel of doom. How am I going to survive this? How do I hit that core in the middle? 
The answer to the second question is no, you don't hit that core in the middle. See? I'm not damaging it. It's just a giant, stupid wheel. And it's ridiculously hard to survive with three speed ups. This is the most, like, microscopic movements you ever have to make in any shooter. Oh, did I just accidentally press A? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Wait, good, wait. Yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to go inside those little segments to show off, but I was just too nervous. Because I'd never ever made it this far in a no-death run, and my dad was still watching. And I was sure I was going to break one million points. Look at that. Only 3,900 points to go, folks. I will be the first to break one million points in the first loop. <laughs> More music glitches, although I think we did drop some frames. Unless it's just being viewed at a choppy rate. Oh yeah, gotta check this out. Screen filter, soft. Woo! Look how blurry that is, it looks like a normal Game Boy Advance. <laughs> screen filter is so neat. I wonder how that would look uh, if Tybo gets his uh, component video connection. <laughs> That would be crazy. Set it to sharp and then have RGB. Whoa. Okay, I have to fit into that small space. I think I got him beat! Yes! Finally, no death, Gradius Galaxies. And here's the fake credits, kind of like Donkey Kong Country. Hmm. You know, I heard a rumor that they're going to make a game based on Gradius Galaxies the movie. Although they could only afford one thirty-second of the rights for the name, they bought uh, the word Gradius, but then for the rest of the title, they could only afford uh, one sixteenth. So they just took half of the X and they took a V. You know, a V on top of an upside-down V makes X. Haven't you read Roman numerals or anything? Jeez. I can't wait till Gradius V comes out. Wait, this just in. Oh, it's already out. I think. This just in also, I'm playing it. Right. I don't know what he's talking about. Although I heard about Gradius V, that's a cool game. Hmm. Takahiro Toda, I know him. NOT! <laughs> this is, oh yeah, the two songs that I hate, I didn't get to mention in Stage 5. And stage 5 music is the only song in this game I don't like. And I kind of dislike the music for the credits. Maybe because I heard it a lot. I tried to not hear it unless I was actually in the process of beating the game. Because, you know, if you don't hear the credits music, then it just sounds better when you beat the game. It's supposed to be tied with a huge accomplishment. Well, I think I've done that successfully with Ikaruga's ending music. Uh, anyway. Oh, look, here's the start of loop two. Oh, what's this? I didn't break a million points? Well, come on guys, I was only 1900 points short, that's the generator I missed in stage in stage 7, a fireball I missed in stage 3, a piece of glass that I missed in stage 2, and then maybe some extra points on the boss in stage 1, and I would have got it. And there, I just broke it now. So now you can see what it looks like. Speed up! Speed up. I swear this is not a remix, we did not add this in. This is part of the game. <laughs> this music is such a classic. It's so great. The screen fields are still on soft. Oh yeah. Um, I played on normal size screen the whole time because I like it when the screen is smaller and I can see more things on the screen at once. It's the same reason I use 800 by 600 resolution on my computer. Hey, don't laugh. Please. Uh, I'm off key, or an octave too low, either way. <sighs> wonder how many frames we dropped. If any. Actually, why am I still talking? Because the subtitle credits should be going by now. That's not right. Oops, I don't think I- oh no, didn't get that generated. You know, I should be reading what the credits subtitles say, but I don't know what they are because we haven't added them in yet. So just imagine my voice saying the credits out loud. So you notice how the generators fly in faster? 
Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to show you guys that they spit out the second wave faster. Well, anyway, at least you guys have a reason to make your own Gradius Galaxy's No Death Run. So you can actually get a million points in the first loop. Taibo almost convinced me. Yeah, I gave up in the end. Even though Shiner seldom gives up, this was one of those times when I gave up. Taibo almost convinced me to make another run where I actually did have a million points, but I realized that Gradius 5 was too important and I had enough excuses to justify why I didn't get a million points. You know, you guys know that I would have gotten the 58,600 points if I, was, if I wasn't concerned about file size. Actually, if I wasn't concerned about file size, I'd try to go for three loops or something like that. Although, I would never ever do it. Ever. <sighs> oh, I burped again. <laughs> and now, the most spectacular ending you can imagine. Missile. Fighting the final boss all over again. <laughs> Hey, those lasers are moving faster. This is how I used to fight this guy. And so back then, my best score was only like 43,000. Wait, that tells me something new about how Taibo's doing stage one. Taibo doesn't really play for score anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching the movie. I might come out with a t-shirt sometime later. And an Omaki clip too. See you guys later. What do you think? Do I look fat in this headset? Hmm. That could tell you something about how the runs went, eh?